Hey everybody! If you're watching this video, it's either because you're currently studying for the GAMSAT or you're at least thinking about studying for it in the future. So if so, I really hope this video helps you out. When I was studying for the GAMSAT, I wish someone told me about some of these books because I think it would have really helped at the time. I had to find these on my own and kind of pick the best ones from what I did during my preparation. And now I want to pass that on to you because it really worked for me. So in this video, what we're going to do is go through what the GAMSAT booklet currently says about Section 2 really briefly before touching on these books that I recommend to help with your Section 2. So what you should have on your screen now is the criteria for the assessment of written communication. Now you might want to pause it here just to kind of have a good read through it, but really what it's saying is you're considered on two things both the thought and content of what you're writing and the organization and expression of what you're writing. So if we were to go into a little bit more detail, I've highlighted these parts from the pamphlet that I think are particularly important. The written communication section tests the ability to produce and develop ideas. The first task deals with socio-cultural issues. The second deals with personal and social issues. The writing is assessed on two criteria, the quality of the thinking about a topic and the control of the language demonstrated. Assessment focuses on the way that the ideas are integrated into a thoughtful response. Candidates are not assessed on the correctness of the ideas and responses that do not relate to the topic will receive a low score. Why am I recommending these books? Well, these books, in my mind, are phenomenal examples of social cultural issues. And also, they give you the leeway to talk about your personal or social issues using evidence from the book to kind of like back you up. So another thing is that your quality of thinking about the topic is what's assessed during your essay piece in section two. Now, the best way to give evidence that you have quality thinking about a topic is to reference a book, either through a quote or through a character or through a theme that a book touches on. What that's showing is that whatever theme they've given you in section two that you need to write about, not only are you making something up on the spot, but you're able to use previous experience and previous knowledge and integrate that into a quality piece. And what it's doing is it's showing that you've thought about this stuff before and this isn't new to you. And it's, it, it helps give your writing that bit of confidence when you've got the actual examples to back up what you're claiming. So what we're focusing on today are Penguin Classics. The reason that we're focusing on that is for a few reasons. One, they're super cheap in terms of some other books, like Penguin, Cl Penguin Classics are really accessible. The other thing is that since they're classics, they're books that have stood the test of time, which means that they do have a high literary value. The other thing is that considering they're a Penguin Classic, it means that they're actually quite widely read. And so there's a really high chance that your marker has read these books. So when you do make a reference to them, they can confirm, yeah, that's what that book's about. And you kind of get those extra marks for um, you know, properly providing the evidence to your writing. That's why I recommend these books. They're likely something your marker has read and they have really high literary value. So the first book that we're going into is 1984. Now, I'm not going to go into super detail about what these books are about because you know, I recommend just Googling the blurb or even looking up a synopsis video on YouTube. There's plenty of it. What I will be talking about are the themes though. So 1984, really good in terms of referencing the current socio-political problems that we might be having in the world today. So what I mean by that is you may have heard the term Orwellian as a, as a word or we're moving towards an Orwellian society. Well, that term comes from this book, 1984 by George Orwell. And so the themes that you're likely to encounter in this book is nationalism, security, privacy, love, war, peace, government, individuality. It, it's really 
there's a lot that you can extract from this book. So it's really high yield. You know, this book isn't just about one thing, it's about many things. So there's a really good chance that no matter what your section two themes are about, there's something in this book that you're gonna be able to draw from. Which brings me on to the second book, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Now, why I like this book is that it covers very similar themes to 1984, but it does it in almost a reverse way. So to give you an idea, 1980, one of 1984's themes is control of a population, you know, a government's control of a population. Now, 1984 does that through fear and violence and security, or surveillance rather. But Brave New World accomplishes control of a population through enjoyment and pleasure and dumbing people down with media and drugs and things like that. So it's a similar theme, but the way that theme is accomplished is reversed. So it gives you like a good mirror. So what I'm saying is that if there's anything that 1984 um, can cover in your essay. Brave New World will be able to cover it in a different way that either resonates better or you might just prefer the book a little bit more. The next book I'm going to recommend, I'm not recommending for the themes of the book. What I'm recommending it for is the style of writing. Now, the reason I'm doing this is when you're given your quotes in section two that you need to compose a writing piece from, those quotes could be from anywhere. It could be from a poem. It could be from a book written in the 1700s. Like you just don't know. And you have a really good advantage if you can understand and extrapolate the meaning from every single one of those quotes. Because even if you're given you know, five quotes, three of those quotes you might get and you're, you understand them, but you just don't want to write about them. Maybe you don't have an idea that sparks. So having those two other quotes that might resonate with you is really important. You're at a huge disadvantage though if you can't understand what those quotes are saying, either because the writing style is really dated or because it's like poetic in a certain way or something like that. The reason I bring this up is because I was a science student. I had never really done any English studies at all. And so learning what some things were saying in terms of like writing style and trying to extrapolate the meaning from it was quite difficult when, I, when it came to poetry and Victorian era books. So Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, gorgeous book written in 1797, I think, just a super good example of Victorian era writing. Now you're definitely going to need to switch your brain to kind of follow the meaning of this writing style. At least I did, but it was really good practice for section one. And it was really good practice for section two, especially when you get those quotes that are written in that Victorian era style and you want to get the most out of those quotes, you want to be familiar with the writing style. Now, if you're not into Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, a good substitute would be Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. So I'm recommending this like literally for the exact same reason as the Pride and Prejudice book. You don't need to read both of them if you don't want to. Um, one or the other is perfectly fine. It's just a really good example of Victorian era writing. Now, one final book, which is very important in my mind, that I don't have a physical copy of, is A.C. Grayling's The Meaning of Things. The reason that this book is so great for Section 2 study is that the book is essentially a collection of mini essays written by the author A.C. Grayling structured around themes that the author has chosen. So in essence, it's a collection of Gamsat Section 2 essays because that's what they're asking from you as well. And so what this author does is they'll have a certain set of themes. So for example, they might have nationalism or love or something like that. And then underneath that, they will write a roughly 1,000-ish word essay complete with historical examples as evidence or quotes, really meaningful quotes. And they combine that into a expression of writing about that theme. And so it really gives a good context as to how you yourself can structure a short essay revolving around the theme using evidence from books. So 
AC Grayling has done a lot of the work for you in terms of the type of writing you should aspire to write like to get a good section two mark. But, you know, I'm not expecting everybody to be writing like AC Grayling. But the point is, it's just a great example. And so really in conclusion, what we've got, we've got a few different books here that will help you with the themes. The two big ones are 1984 and Brave New World. We've got a couple of books here that can help you really brush up on that Victoria era writing style just to make sure you get the most from those quotes when they give them to you. And it's also a bonus for section one. Uh, that is Pride and Prejudice and Great Expectations. And then finally, AC Grayling's The Meaning of Things really combines all of this into a good example of what a section two essay should look like. So, hope you really enjoyed that video. I wish someone had told me some of this stuff when I was you know, grinding to get into medical school. And I, I'm really glad that I'm able to share it with you. So if there's anything else that you would like from me, um, video suggestions or even just general, general advice, feel free to contact me. Um, either message a comment below or send me an inbox.